Okay, welcome back to a new physics tutorial. Uh, in this video I would like to cover a very important exercise which is commonly used in uh, or which commonly appears in examinations, problem sheets and so on. Yeah? So maybe you have seen this already several times before um, and it's also related to kinematics. So the, the exercise uh, text is as follows. A person wants to measure the height of a well, this could be also a building for example, uh, by dropping a stone into it. Yeah? Uh, after around 3.2 seconds after releasing the stone, he hears the splash sound of the stone when it touches the water surface. And now, with the help of this time, you can then calculate the height of the well or of the building. Yeah? So you can also try it yourself. You can, If you want to measure the height of your house, for example, you can go uh, to the roof, you can let something fall down, of course, to, by making sure that nobody is hurt, and then uh, you can uh, actually calculate the height of your house. Yeah? So in, in part one of this um, exercise, we assume that we have an infinitely large speed of sound, yeah? which means that we can actually ignore the sound propagation inside the well, and we can assume that we instantaneously hear the splash. Yeah? And then the, everything gets quite easy, so this is the easier part actually. And in order to, to solve this exercise, I always recommend to make a sketch. Yeah? So we can make in this case a sketch of the well. So let's suppose we have here our, our ground level and then here we have the well. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry for my bad, driving, uh, for my bad uh, drawing skills. And uh, here we have uh, the person. having the stone here in hand and this is released. Uh, so after that it of course fell down. So um, the, what is given in this exercise or what is what is uh, yeah, searched for and this is of course the height. So we have to first define what is the height and this is of course the distance between the ground of the well and the position of the stone. Yeah? This we call in this case edge. And uh, then what is also very important is that you make or that you draw a coordinate system. Let's make it in blue, just to make sure that everybody who who is checking your uh, calculations is sure or can be sure to be in the same reference system. Yeah? Uh, so maybe we can draw that here in the in the right corner uh, in the left corner. So um, we have two axes. The x-axis is going in, in horizontally the y-axis is vertically drawn. So now uh, you can see the stone falls in negative y-direction. So um, yeah, this is in principle everything what we need and now we can directly start calculating. So uh, there is a very common relation between acceleration, distance and uh, time and maybe you have seen this formula before. I will just uh, write it down here. y of t is given as one half a t square plus v zero t plus y zero. So a is of course the acceleration. Um, v zero is the initial speed of the object, and y zero is an initial distance. So in this case, the initial distance is of course. Uh, oh, sorry, the initial speed is um, per definition zero. Yeah, just because we yeah, we, we release the ball directly from our hand or the person releases the ball or this uh, stone um, directly from his hand, which means it does not have any initial speed. Uh, however, it has an initial distance. Yeah? So if we assume that here, this is actually defined as the height of zero, the, the, uh, the, the, the surface of the water in the well actually, uh, then the stone is released from the height edge, uh, which means that uh, here instead of y0 we can directly uh, write edge. And of course the the acceleration is also known and this is just the g-factor yeah, in the gravitational field of the earth. So this we can directly replace with g. And one thing which I have forgotten, because as I said it falls in negative direction, so we have to insert a minus here. Yeah? Uh, this is a thing which also is commonly forgotten by students. So now we can uh, continue 
writing here. So this formula then turns into minus one half g t square plus, and then this is zero, so plus h. Yeah? And we are interested in the position where where the ball hits the ground. Yeah? So this is actually zero, as I said. So uh, in this case, after this 3.2 seconds passed, the, the position y is given as zero. Yeah? And now we have uh, an equation, we can solve that. And uh, we only have to, uh, yeah, we have to solve this actually for, for h, for the height, because this is what we want to calculate. So we can write here h equal uh, one half g t square. And this is a very well-known formula. I'm sure you have seen this also in school or in university several times. Um, so you don't need all this derivation here. You can also use basically your logic in order to derive that. Uh, but it's better to also use the uh, or to, to derive something from scratch just to make sure that you are not going into the wrong direction. And it's always good to have a double check. So now we uh, we only uh, we can use this formula now, and we can only we only have to insert now all values. So now we have one half times nine point one eight meter per square second times, and then we have the time here uh, three point two. Uh, second squared and this gives uh, we can go a little bit down uh, this gives as a result I have calculated this already with my calculator 50 times 5 5 uh, 50 point sorry 50 point 22 meter and this is the height of the well by uh, using this method here and assuming an infinitely large speed of sound as I have said before but of course, this is only half of the truth. This is physically cannot be correct because we know that uh, the speed of sound is given as around 330 meter per second under normal condition. Yeah. So now in part B, we actually want to now take the speed of sound into account. And yeah, this, this does change a little bit, but the solution will be more complicated. So um, the first thing we can use the formula which we have obtained before already, this uh, h times one half g t square. But now this is not the full time anymore, t, which we have to take into account, but only the falling time of the stone. So this we will note maybe with tf. Yeah? In addition, we have another height now, uh, which is c times t, the speed of sound multiplied with the the time which the sound wave needs to reach from uh, from the bottom of the well to the top, yeah? to the to the ear of the person who has uh, dropped the stone. So in this case, uh, this is of course equal to the height of the well. This is also equal to the height of the well. Yeah. So what we can do here, we can just subtract this equation from this one. Yeah. Uh, the left side, of course, is zero. Yeah, because uh, h minus h is zero, and for the right side, it appears. Uh, one half g t f squared minus c t s. And now there's still one problem. We have now one equation here, but we have two unknown, uh, yeah, unknown variables. T s we don't know, and t f we don't know. However, uh, also so we need now um, one other equation in order to replace one of these variables. Uh, and then at the end we only uh, have an equation where there is one unknown variable inside. So the other one we call the total time, uh, which is maybe here in this case denoted as t, and this would be the sum of these two, ts, the sound uh, time, plus the falling time. And this time t we actually know, this is exactly the the, the time information which we have from the exercise text. Yeah, so now it gets actually uh, very simple. We only have to solve this for, for TS, for example. So we can write here TS equals um, T minus TF. And then we can uh, use this TS here and replace that TS. And then we have only T, which we know, 
and the unknown variable tf inside our equation. So what we can have, what we have now is one half gtf squared minus c times t minus t, uh, sorry, minus tf equal zero. Yeah, just this equation above, and now we can. Um, now we can rearrange this formula a little bit, so we can write, or this equation, and we can write one half g t f squared uh, plus c t f minus c t equal zero. Yeah, and we will use now, uh, we have now, as you can see here, a quadratic equation yeah, uh, in, in t f. So what we want to do now, we want to use pq formula formula in order to um, solve that. Or oh, no, before we, we do that, we first have to, of course, multiply this whole equation with 2 in order to get rid of this 1 half. And then we also have to divide it by g in order to get rid of that part. And uh, then at the end, when you do that, you get here tf squared plus 2 times c over um, 2 times c over g tf minus 2 times c over g t equals to 0. Yeah, and now we can uh, use, as I said, pq formula in order to solve that. So in this case, uh, yeah, this would be our p. And uh, this whole part, including the minus sign, would be our q. So uh, yeah, the PQ formula is, I think, the easiest way how to do that. So the only thing which we have to do now, uh, we have to write down TF is, of course, minus P half. So we have to write here uh, minus C over G plus minus, because we have two solutions. And uh, then here we have to write um, Q, uh, P square. So p half square c over uh, c square over g square uh, minus q so plus 2 c over g yeah and uh, this is everything um, yeah now we can insert everything into our calculator i will not now insert all the values here into this formula because it will be quite lengthy however when you recalculate that and i really uh, highly recommend to do that, then you should really insert your values. You can see that all the units will go away and so on. But uh, I will do that uh, just, um, I will just give you the example, uh, the, the, uh, I will just give you the uh, result here because I think it's a little bit faster. So I have calculated this with the help of a calculator and as a result I obtained uh, 3.06 um, 3 seconds. And uh, yeah, this is uh, actually uh, the the falling time. So the falling time is now a little bit uh, smaller than the one which we have, uh, which which is given in the exercise. This 3.2 seconds, just because the rest of the time, the time difference between this time and the fall and the total time which is given, is here in this case the sound time. Yeah, and now in the last step, when we have this result here. The only thing which we have to do, we have to insert this into our formula, which we have shown in the beginning, this uh, one half g t f square. This is uh, one of our uh, assumptions here in the beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, then we can, uh, we can do this now. So it would be in this case one half times 9.81 meter per square second times um, times and then 3.06 seconds squared and as a result um, I obtained 45.95 meter and as you can see the result is uh, significantly smaller than the one which we obtained in exercise part A. Yeah, it's around 4 meter I would say um, so this is of course yeah, clear, or this gets clear when you when you think how we calculated it is there and how we calculated it here. Um, and uh, now you also know that uh, if you calculate the height of an object by only taking this formula here, one half gt, 
square into account, your result will be wrong. Yeah? So in order to really obtain the correct results, which is smaller than the one which you would otherwise obtain, um, in order to obtain this correct result, you always have to use actually the way which we have presented here. Yeah? So you have to um, yeah, you have to solve or you have to first calculate Tf, the falling time, uh, with the help of this equation here or this formula. And then at the end you have to insert this formula into your formula for the height and this gives you then the correct value. You can of course also insert this formula directly here and then calculate the result. It doesn't matter. At the end uh, it's very important that you know where the difference is and uh, that there is a difference of course. And the only thing is in order to get the result as good as possible you have to know the speed of sound as good as possible. But of course you can uh, take a look at certain uh, tables in uh, even at Wikipedia where you find uh, the exact speed of sound under certain uh, conditions uh, such as pressure, um, uh, temperature and so on. Yeah. But I hope that you find this quite instructive and you understand now how to calculate the height of an object with the help of uh, just easy kinematics. And uh, yeah, if you, if you like the video please hit the like button. Um, if you are new to my channel and you want to also, or you don't want to miss any further videos, um, you want to be updated uh, continuously, please um, also subscribe my channel. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you very soon for a new video, uh, or a new programming video or no, a new physics uh, tutorial.